There's no best sim, at least in my opinion. If there was, it would actually make everything a lot easier. But depending on what kind of cars and tracks and whether you want to race offline or online and many other decisions, there's a plethora of sims to pick from. Now for myself, specifically with vintage racing, which is what I and probably you watching mostly like, I'm routinely racing in five, six, maybe seven different sims on a pretty regular basis. Each has their positives and negatives, good stuff and bad stuff. And depending on what I'm trying to do, usually can identify maybe what the best sim for that's gonna be. But I've wanted to do this for a long time and I'm always hesitant because there always seems like there's something coming which might change how I would want to look at it. But I've wanted to do the same race or as close as I can to the exact same race across all these different sims and just see what the differences are. So I've constructed what I think is the most vanilla vintage race that you can do. It's at least the thing that's available in most of the sims. Monza, 1960s Monza with 1967 Grand Prix cars. A classic combination in my eyes, but short races across across a bunch of different sims just to see what it's like. So first up, we've got Grand Prix Legends. You don't think I could do a historic racing sim overview without Grand Prix Legends, the classic, but green flag is up and down right away. We're underway. I'm at the back of the grid. Monza historic, like I said, we'll scoot around a few of the rear enders here. And uh, driving the Lotus 49 which is absolutely one of the most common historic cars in sim racing. So we should have no trouble finding this in most of the other sims. We'll run down to Curva Grande here though and hopefully avoid some fireworks if there are any. But Grand Prix Legends, by far, I would say the least approachable sim that I'm gonna go through today. One that is just so difficult to get up and running. I made an install tutorial for it. So we've got cars trying to work their way as we head down to the Lesmos here. But I made an install tutorial for it to hopefully just help some folks get it up and running. And I know a lot of folks have been able to, which is great, but there's also a big number that, that just really haven't been able to get it to work, whether it's their hardware or software issues. Lock up the brakes there. We got Gio Bonnier in front on some of the curbing. Wah! As the Cooper there slides out over the car a little bit, but short race, hopefully our Cosworth here will, will stay intact for it. Wah! Side by side. But for me, this is, I still play this not because I, I wanna say it's better than modern sims or things, but in so many ways it just does things differently than a lot of modern sims do. If you like historic formula racing specifically, and there's other types of racing in GPL, but if you like this historic Grand Prix stuff and, and wanna race and feel like you're taking part in the actual Grand Prix, Grand Prix Legends is hard to beat. I'm racing with the 1967X mod, so this is kind of your deluxe version of Grand Prix Legends. I'm gonna try my best with each of the sims to look at what I feel like is the best iteration of what we're doing here. So fly under the oval past the Michelin man there. I'm gaining quite rapidly here on the cars in front. They might be tuned just slightly slow, but I'll easily blast past the, uh, the old Honda there. Oh, the car gets a bit tense on the suspension coming out onto the straight. Get past Rodriguez to the left. I'm gonna make my way from the worst near the front at the end of this first lap. We've got two more laps to try to do better. As Rodriguez is hanging in there though, and below the yellow line's a tricky proposition onto the oval. Get the car sorted out straight there. But feeling-wise, so the thing that I get asked a lot of questions about with Grand Prix Legends specifically is the physics. We've got a green flag there, so maybe some fireworks behind me. But the physics, the force feedback, you know, how does it work? Does it work with modern equipment and things? And it does. It actually does have force feedback. It was one of the first sims that had force feedback in it. It was patched in. Stay on the inside of Rodriguez there, get around him. It was patched in shortly after release and it's been improved like everything else with the sim. It's been improved by the community. Feeling wise, I'm so used to Grand Prix Legends at this point, I, I couldn't honestly give you an unbiased opinion over how it feels, but for myself, somebody that's not necessarily a physics guru, I just enjoy driving these old cars. I quite like the feeling of GPL. I think if I had any complaints about it these days, it would be two things. One, the surfaces of the tracks are all very smooth. As we see here, lovely rendition of Monza. This is actually, obviously, the Monza 10K version. It's a modded track, but very few tracks in GPL have 
you know, detailed surfaces that have bumps and ruts and things. And these tracks would have been quite bumpy, especially compared to a modern circuit. So that's a little bit of a disappointing thing, I guess you'd say about it. It's just the way it is. You can't really have bumpy surfaces, lock up the tires a little bit coming into Parabolica. You can't really have you know detailed surfaces in GPL like you do on tracks these days, but some of the better made Grand Prix Legends tracks will surprise you in that department. That's number one. The second thing is the low speed handling is, is definitely one of those areas, especially if you're looking at the default cars, the original physics for Grand Prix Legends. That'll catch a lot of folks out. I think everybody that's tried GPL whoa, will come into the corner You never get used to that. Everybody that's tried GPL has spun off in the first corner uh, trying to lap their first time through. And, and it's that low speed cold tire grip that is just so difficult to control, feels like ice. And that's, I think, how GPL got this reputation of being an ice skating simulator. End of the straightaway, getting on my teammate here, Graham Hill in front, quite handily. So I'll pitch it into the corner. Got a nice little pack up front. And I think I might actually have a shot at this overall win. Can, of course, jack up the AI strength and things. But it's none of it's as easy as modern sims. You're going to be working in text files or, you know, just trying to figure out the ways that GPL works as the AI slow each other down. I always praise the AI, and this is perhaps the, the worst way to look at Grand Prix Legends doing a three-lap race as we're now on the final lap. Get off the throttle a little early, come down to Curva Grande. I think Grand Prix Legends AI is really good at recreating full races or long-distance events. They're going to have personalities to them. Some drivers are going to push at the start of an event. Some will will wait for the end to be fast. Mechanical failures happen. Those are all the reasons why the AI and GPL are really good. They'll actually complete a race and do it somewhat realistically. The actual wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing leaves a bit to be desired, although they're certainly raceable once you understand their quirks. But they use a massively simplified version of the physics model, so that's why you see AI kind of wag around side to side and stuff like that. So for wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, a lot of the newer sims might actually do some of that better. But for full races, you're going to have a tough time comparing to Grand Prix Legends, which is another main reason I, I constantly come back to the sim. I want to run a full race against a full field of competent AI that will at least finish realistically and not, you know, die bomb each other other unrealistically. Grand Prix Legends does a good job with that. All right, come out. We're we'll just got to trip around the oval here, and I have given up the fight just a little bit, talking my way through the race there. But on the final lap, get the pit board as we come by the pits. The atmosphere is incredible. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about graphics during this video because you can obviously see for yourselves what you enjoy to look at. I quite like the graphic style in GPL. It's hill there slides to the outside i'll see if i can get him down the back section of the oval he's gonna pinch me down oh no <laughs> you don't do that every day Wah, get it down the gears we're gonna leave that cut in normally if i crash there i might have redone this race but that's a good save i'll give myself that one Wah, get the heart pumping Graphics are nice in Grand Prix Legends. I quite like them. It looks very cartoony, but it's it's just very comfort food for me. So again, one of those things that's tough for me to give an unbiased opinion on, but it's Grand Prix Legends. It's the classic. A lot of you have watched my YouTube videos because I raced this old sim. And of course, you get this awesome option to raise your fist, which I don't have set up right now. There it is. Ah, recover from that spin. We'll see if I can have a little bit better luck in some of the other sims. So now for something a touch more modern, but certainly more accessible, R-Factor 2. Green's out, long wait for it, we're underway. We'll try to avoid the chaos here, because God knows we're gonna have some. So come down to the first corner, Mike Spence real slow there, was this eagle squeaks on by as well, up to fourth gear, just avoid that armco on the inside, guys. We'll keep it to the inside, throttle up, Ooh, three wide maybe, sneak past both of those eagles, come down to Curva Grande, nice and easy does it come on into the corner everybody playing nice in front so far we'll work towards the exit a bit of dust being kicked up 
but so far so good. I got this Honda right in front of me. We'll come down to the Lesmos. Up to fifth gear for a moment. They come in cold tires and that really matters in our factor too. The physics in this sim are so incredible and it's the thing that keeps me coming back to it because I'll be honest, this isn't my first attempt at the start of this race. Sometimes the AI can be pretty atrocious in this sim and it varies by car and by track. But when you can get it right, when you can get a good race going, there's nothing else like it. So we'll float it on through Ascari. This is the F1 Legends mod for our factor too. And there are quite a few different 60s formula style mods and different cars and things. And if you're looking at these and might be thinking that the models look a little funny, breaking down hard for Parabolica here up the inside of Anderson. If you're thinking the models look a little bit funny and fictitious, it's because they are. Purposely, oh, as the car's in front run wide, he's gonna run into the barrier there. Just saves it, my God. I think that's Yakin Rent maybe. This mod was purposefully done with some fictionalized cars, maybe to avoid copyright, I'm not actually sure. But it's, in my opinion, the better of the different Formula mods. It's actually one of the Lotuses. One of my teammates will sneak up the inside of him and hopefully avoid the theatrics of the Grand Prix Legends race. But now onto the oval, and you see the bumpiness in the circuit. I'm getting a nice rattling in the wheel, but not over the top, which makes you feel like you're really there. As I got a lot of top speed on a few of these cars, zip up the inside. The fictional nature of the cars might bug some folks. You want to race the real thing or as real as you can get. There are certainly some mods out there which have more realistic modeled cars and things as we get squeezed down low on the inside of another Lotus. We'll come through the corner, but these cars, they don't have it in the visuals. They certainly have it in the physics and they're all a bit different and match the real life car from that season. So come across the line and complete the first lap. Seems like I've got a good amount of top speed on the cars in front, so I might be able to get to the very front of this one. Come down to Curva Grande there, sneak up the inside of another one. We've got a Ferrari then in front. Big exhaust kick from behind. We'll come to the corner. You get an amazing feeling of being on the edge of grip in our factor too. And it is one of these things that doesn't come across in video. It's so hard to explain why this sim feels so good. So got a interesting move in front there as well. Just touch the curb, but you can feel every little bump, every little change in the tire, the flex of the tire. So we've got a car on the inside here as we'll come through the second Lesmo. We'll throttle up, get it really sideways and can still catch it. It's not the quick way around, but the fact that you can get a car that sideways and still be able to manage it is always a really cool feeling. The tires, I've described it before as they're feeling like there's nothing between you and the car. Whereas some other sims, you feel like you're controlling something that's controlling the car. With R Factor 2, I just feel like I'm controlling the front axle, the steering box, everything directly. There's no fogginess in the way. I don't know how to describe it. It's one of the things you just have to try, but everybody that praises R Factor 2 for the physics, I absolutely agree. And it's not so bad in the looks department and things. This is one of the original tracks that came with R Factor 2, or was released shortly thereafter. I took a look at this track and the other historic circuits shortly after they came out. It's got a bunch of speed on this Honda as well. Seems like they're getting an awful bad run onto the straight. We'll just dive underneath Surtees there. I think I have just a couple cars in front, so I've got one more lap to do it to see if I can uh, catch up to them. But not too long ago, I, I did a video review taking a look at uh, some of the default circuits and some of the F3, F2 cars and had a lot of fun doing it. But it always takes a little bit of work to get a race set up and going in our factor too. It's not the same for me as Grand Prix Legends where I can just punch in what I want and go. But I do find myself booting up R Factor 2 to just drive sometimes, especially around some of the really nice circuits that exist like Dundrod and Isle of Man and Targa Florio. It's a fun one just to boot up and, and drive in. It's this Ferrari in front, a little bit slow, but we got two more up the road. I don't know if I'll have enough time to catch them before the line. Down to fourth gear. Go back on the throttle, very slow then on the inside. Maybe had a bit of a contact in front. Get on the outside of them and come down to the Lesmos side by side. 
out of second gear. I love the way the suspension travels and moves as that Ferrari hit suddenly has found some race pace and decides to blast on by. But the way the cars move is very believable. Everything about the physics, I, I guess I can't say it enough if I'm not making my point clear. It's all about the physics for me in our factor too. And it makes all the other parts of it worth sticking with and trying to put up with basically. But it seems like there's some focus, renewed focus. So we'll come around the outside of that Lotus then, dispatch of him. I think I'm fighting for second now with this Ferrari. It seems like there's a renewed focus on some of the AI and things. There's been some patches recently and as of today, this is the newest version of R-Factor 2, so I'm using whatever enhancements it has, which don't seem to be doing the trick just yet for this stuff, but hopefully they can continue to work on it, because I think there's a potential that the sim here could be really, really fun in an offline capacity, as much fun as they want to make it for online. Get it up to fifth gear then will stream by. I love how you can see the cars on the other side of the track as well. No cones or anything to keep us on the correct side. We'll slide in and onto the banking and I should have enough speed to pass this Ferrari before we get to the end. So we'll head onto the back section nicely in the slipstream. I suppose on the last lap you might want to make it a little harder to get by, but no problem there. So you have one car just up the road, and I'm not going to be able to catch him in time, I don't think. But we'll come through. So our factor two is, is something I'll continue to use and come back to, but for this type of race, this probably isn't its strong suit for what we're doing here today. But for a lot of the other things, a lot of the nice long tracks and just enjoying driving a car and it really feeling like a mechanical car that you're driving, you really can't beat it. I really can't say enough good things about our Factor 2's physics. So fun little race, chaotic AI, and that seems to be par for the course with this one. So now to an absolute favorite of mine, Assetto Corsa. Excited for this. Lights are up. Out. And we're underway. And it's always a bit of a slow start in Assetto Corsa. It takes the wind out of it a little bit, but once we get running, it'll hopefully be a good race. Get it up to second gear and let everybody get away. The Lotus takes off after you get above 6,000 RPM. It feels right to race at Monza in Assetto Corsa. If only I was driving a Ferrari, it would even be that little bit more perfect, but we'll come down into Curva Grande for the first time and watch for hopefully not as much chaos this time in front. Car's running wide just a little bit, a bit slow on the exit, get it back down to third gear and see if I can sneak by. Everybody's playing nice and safe with each other here. Kick up of dust. Nice and orderly. So far, so good. Keep it second gear, we'll bounce off the curb a little bit there. It absolutely looks incredible. I said I wasn't going to talk about graphics much when I was in GPL, and maybe that's indicative of it being such an old sim. Let's get it back down to second gear, but clearly this looks quite nice, at least to my eyes. With having the right car models as well, the realistic car models and all of the different drivers and all of that, it is very good. This is the F167 GPL mod. Grand Prix Legends mod over at THR, which I'll put a link for as much as I can from this whole video in the description. Uh, but this is the default Lotus 49, and one important thing to note really is that not all of the cars are equal in their quality, I would say, at least visually. Some have been ported all the way from Grand Prix Legends, which has a very different uh, set of requirements and capabilities and things, and one car that looks good in there may not look good coming into something this new. I think the Cooper specifically, I can see Sifford in my mirrors ducking in and out. That's one that's been pulled directly from 1998 or 2004 maybe when that model was done. Sifford's actually gonna come on the inside as we head onto the oval, oval surprising me there a bit. We'll bounce into the oval and man, the sense of speed in this sim is very well done. Just very immersive feeling with the neck FX and things on. Running custom shaders patch and a whole bunch of plugins and things that I always run with pure weather and all of that. So just aesthetically looks amazing. That's one of the biggest draws to this sim. It just really captures your eye visually. But maxed out in RPM, I can't gear this car any further than we are right now. We're really hitting a top speed and it feels quite nice, very bouncy on the banking. I always really liked this 
version of Monza, the 66 version, and a set of Corsa here as we come out of the oval. Back on the straight and come to complete the first lap, we get a car in front. Who is that? Hitting the hay bales a little bit on the inside. Up to P14, I got a little bit of work to do. Jackie Stewart sitting quite high in his BRM in front there. So we'll rush down to Curva Grande. Get off a little bit earlier, down to fourth gear. One jumps on the brakes. Guy Ligier in front, so he's an experience. Balance the car there. Sneak underneath one of the Coopers. I think it was Rent. Easily done. Back up to fifth gear and run it down to the Lesmos. One problem I have with Assetto Corsa quite often, so we'll run a bit deep there into the Lesmos, but gather it up. It's just the AI speed overall. We've seen so far in the other two races that I've done, the AI have been a bit slow, but there is a bit more headroom there. I had them set not quite as high, high as they can go in those sims. This is as fast as the AI can be, at least the front ones in Assetto Corsa, and always seem to outrun them, even if I'm not driving perfectly. So it's one of those problems, you sometimes have to give the AI more capable machines than you to actually have a good race. But there can be good races offline in a set of course, despite what some folks say about the AI. I would argue that they're behaving better than what we just experienced in our factor too. I love how this car feels, able to balance it there quite easily. Get it to come out of the corner right on the gearbox. This Cooper in front, I think it's Rodriguez. We'll out accelerate him. I do have the DFV against that Maserati. Up on the inside, though, is we're going to head into the oval. It's a bit sketchy being below the yellow line. We'll let him have that. Slide in behind, see if I can get a slipstream down the back stretch. Just try to plan it. He's leaving me plenty of room on the outside, but it's a tough place to go as it narrows up a little bit on the exit. We'll scoop all the way down. He's the banking, bit of an oval racing tactic. He's that banking to rush the car downhill and get on by with a little bit more speed there on the straight then. Can't quite see him in my mirror, but yeah, safe. Came into turn three here, quite low, but let the car fade up so we don't scrub as much speed off. We'll run it through the banking. We'll come to one more lap to go. I passed a couple more cars in that lap. It's certainly not going to end up on the podium at this rate. Lotus 49 here. I love driving the Ferrari 312 as well out of this set of cars. There is a newer Eagle than the one I'm running in this race, although I don't know if we'll see it. So just hit the rev chip there. A little more tentative on it. A little bit harder to do that four-wheel drift here than certainly in Grand Prix Legends and in our factor too. The car can just get a little too wide sometimes or a little too sideways and slide out from under you. But we'll outbreak the Brabham in front down a second gear into the Lesmos. A bit deep there, trying not to lock wheels. He actually holds it in on the outside of me. Try to throttle up on the exit there. Who's that Denny Holm? Grab them right in front, underneath the Coca-Cola bridge. It's reminding me how much fun this is. I did a race in these cars quite a long time ago on the regular Grand Prix version of this circuit and had a good time with that. And it's maybe something I need to come back to a bit, a bit more often because if you can keep them on the track, they're a little bit, a little bit more fun to race than I remembered. Get down a second gear. One thing I, I thought was cool in testing, just doing a few practice laps before I started this race, is how similar each of the versions of this event so far and, and where I'm shifting and how the car drives overall. Broad strokes, it does feel like I'm driving the same car, which is encouraging to see. You would hate, hate it to be this dramatically different experience for each sim. But shifting is roughly in the same spot as I'll come up the inside of home. I think he's gonna give me that, thankfully. Oh, is he actually gonna stick it out there? There he is behind me in the mirror. Well, oh, that was quite scary. I'll slide in front of him though. being hounded by Holm. Hopefully I have the driver right in this one. Seems like he's always behind me at Monza. Yeah, but the car does feel like a Lotus 49 that I recognize from the other two versions we just played. And that encourages me overall that regardless of the sim, you do get a realistic enough experience, but I'm really enjoying this as we'll come around and complete this little race, keep it out of the wall there and see if I can pass this last car before the line. Who's this? Jack. Jack himself slide underneath him. 
get across the line. Eighth place, not too bad, and a lot of fun. It's time now for Automobilista 2, a sim I've been finding myself in more and more these days. Green's out, we're underway for our mini race here at Monza. This is the 1971 version of the Monza circuit. It came out pretty recently for this sim, maybe six months ago, could be longer, but definitely the most recently released thing that we're looking at today. So we'll come down to Curva Grande, just take it nice and easy on this opening lap. Hope for the best, put it down to third gear and slot in behind. I think we've got Anderson and Ligier right in front of me. The field sorts themselves out. It's 1971 though, so there's a few more barriers, but it's very much the same circuit that we've been racing on. Come down to the Lesmos, down to second gear on the inside. So you might notice the car is not a Lotus 49. It's more of a generic V8 formula car. So it could be a 49 or a Brabham or something with a Cosworth. So we'll take to the grass a little bit up the inside. Up to fourth gear, we'll head underneath the bridge for the first time and up to Ascari. I found this car likes to understeer quite a lot. So you need to be a bit more careful as everybody checks up. Car in front's quite slow. It's Beltois actually get around him to the outside. There's a mix here of Formula 2 paint schemes and Formula 1 as they ran at some of the Grand Prix. And this is uh, A. Fry's skin pack, 1967 skin pack for this car. So we'll come around the outside of the Parabolica, down a second gear, get on the throttle, and let it drift itself on power. It's a very satisfying thing to do. So now behind Mike Spence as we'll head onto the front stretch and aim it towards the oval. A nice run on him, go to the outside maybe, up to fifth gear, and just try to stick with them as best I can, because I found the AI to be a bit faster than me around the oval, while they're slower on the road course, which is frustrating, but we'll see if I can keep up. So I got the BMW coming up behind me now, there's really nowhere to get around. I noticed, first thing I really noticed on this version of the track was how narrow it is compared to the other sims and photographs and things, visually it just looks so much more narrow, which is which is very odd. I took a look not too long ago at the spa track that Ryza released for AMS2, and I thought that was done amazingly well. All the screenshots I've seen of the Nurburgring, ooh, as he comes down low. But the screenshots I've seen of the Nurburgring that might be out by the time you're watching this video, but is set to come out very soon. That all looks very good as well. Just thought the oval on this version of the circuit just looks a bit odd. We're coming to Curva Grande though. Otherwise, fantastic visuals. Said I wasn't gonna talk about the graphics <laughs> and I've talked about them in every single sim so far, but it is one of the main points. Looks different than a set of course it does where I said that sim looks very real. So we'll get it down to second gear and everybody checks up in front. I'd say this looks equally as real, it just looks very different, so seeing them side by side could be interesting. So we'll come out of the Lesmos there, bogging down just a little bit, but a nice run on Spence. We'll get it onto the back section of the course. I'm very, very happy with how the AI is performing, although they're a bit faster on the oval than they are through the road section. They're racing nicely, which is always good to see. So I can hang it around the outside. Blah. Come out of the stretch. Luckily, they've paved a little bit more of the track and 71, but without that extra pavement, I would say that this feels too narrow, but tough to say if it's everything else that's wrong or if it's this version that's a little off. Snuck in behind Jackie Stewart now, I'm balancing the car out of the Parabolica, one of the best corners, I think, for these types of cars. All right, back onto the front stretch. Jackie keeps it nice and tight to the wall. to the oval again and hopefully I can have a bit, bit more success this time but Spence behind me gets right on my gearbox as the AI love to do in AMS2. Oh, car bouncing around gets a little squirrely. A lot more controllable through the oval than it was definitely in, in GPL and R Factor 2 and things. We'll rock it down at the end of the stretch there. Able to get a bit of speed on them on that back section. And then coming into the corners, they seem to pull on me a bit. But now, nicely on Jackie. See if I can dip it below the yellow line. Always precarious to do that. We'll come around the low side though. 
car bogs down really nice and tight because you'll drift up coming out of there. A bit of a hop from the car. So we'll come to the line and Jackie's got a lot more speed down the front stretch. You gotta remember that for one more lap here. Well, as Spence is gonna squeeze me right to the inside as we'll come down to Curva Grande. This is a bit sketchy. He's competing with me in his F2 machine. But yeah, not having the real cars is not not ideal, but I do like this set of cars. I don't really mind that it's fictional, but of course would prefer if we had the actual models. Uh, there is, I should say, if I didn't already, is, oh, a car in front, as everything was looking so good and we've got bodywork everywhere. So just hold on to the car there, but a big crash in front. I suppose that's not super unrealistic. And at least everybody else seemed to avoid it all right, or at least the cars around me. But get around him. No idea where I'm going to finish now. So we got a few cars that got in front. But I should say that there there is a Lotus 49, if I didn't already. It's a Lotus 49 in Automobilista 2. The B model, though, which has wings and uh, is a lovely car to drive. And that set of cars, I actually prefer, I think, a little bit to these. But since we're doing the non-wingless Grand Prix for everything else, I feel like this is a bit more appropriate. Let's come down to second gear here for Parabolica. I just got the oval, oval in front of me and I'm worried I'm gonna lose all this position there. So there's somewhat random accidents. I haven't seen a car crash like that before, which is always good. If cars are gonna crash, that it's kind of a unique crash each time. Was, oh, I thought that car, I thought Spence was gonna hit the guardrail there. So coming to the oval then, got Sifford coming up behind me in the blue Cooper looking car. So he's gonna get right on my gearbox as well. I'll see if I can get some speed down the back stretch. These group in front is so gonna squeeze me right towards Sifford on the inside, but trying to make my run work. Because we got Jackie X now all over the place. I think I've got a car right on my right side. Come to the left side here behind Jackie Stewart. Let's see if I can carry some speed around the oval. Oh, is that BMW on the low side and they're three wide, my God. It does always feel like you're racing in a movie. It's like the end of the Grand Prix film here. So we come out of the final corner. It's a lot of fun. Definitely gets your heart beating and uh, is a good time. It's a good time. Automobilista 2 is quite a lot of fun to do these types of sprint races in. I've yet to see if it can do the full Grand Prix and things, but comparably I'd say it performed quite well. So I'm breaking the mold a little bit with this one. I have one final sim I want to try, iRacing, which might surprise folks. iRacing does have AI, and in my experience, it's quite good, but I've never tested the Lotus 49 AI. And I knew they had the Lotus 49, and I knew they had Monza, uh, but I thought they might have the historic Monza version with the oval and everything, but they don't. So we're going to race on the modern Monza with the terrible chicanes in this car, but I want to do it because I really want to see how this performs around this track. So five laps here, a bit longer since it's a shorter track and just see what iRacing's like, even though it's not really comparable to the others. All right, so on the grid in iRacing. I know this will be sacrilegious for some of you out there to race this car on a monitored circuit, but I'm very eager to see how this is. Lights are lit. Out, we're underway. Ooh, as I'll try to control the wheel spin off the line there. Get it up to second gear. That's about how my online starts generally go in this car. I've never quite grasped on to iRacing's Lotus 49. I raced it online quite a bit about a year ago, and uh, some of the folks there are so fast. Get it down to first gear for the first chicane. We'll get it up to speed and head up through Curva Grande. Cut back up to the rear end of the pack, so hopefully I can pass at least a few cars here and have a bit of fun with it. But nicely through, no big incidents or anything so far as we'll come through Curva Grande there, up to fifth gear for just a moment. Get it back down the gears. The second chicane here is so tight. Not sure you could go too wide through here, but follow the cars in front. Get a little bit of a snap of oversteer there. Up the gearbox, up to the Lesmos. Down to second for the first one. Tons of runoff to the left there. All right, get it on the throttle side by side. 
get it down to second gear through the second Lesmo. I saw a yellow flag there for a second, but it looks like it was nothing. So get in front of one car there. So I think that's Guy Ligier behind. So this, these are all Lotus 49s, of course. iRacing only has the Lotus 49 for their Grand Prix Legends series. But they're painted up like other cars from 1967, just for fun. And uh, it's part of a skin pack. If you're not familiar or unawares of how iRacing's AI work, you can just download skin packs, collections, as they're called, off of trading paints. And it's, it's really a one-click install, and you've got yourself different sets of AI. You can customize it from there. But no helmets done up with this pack. I could change that if, uh, if I really wanted to get into this, but at least some different liveries to race against. And this car is really well done. It's very lively, if you can't tell. Just try to hold on to it and just racing in front of Guy Ligier, so not performing super well. But we'll finish that first lap and come up to start the second one down the gears for the first chicane. Left foot braking, or uh, right foot braking rather, with heel and toe clutch and everything. Not the quickest way. I've heard there's stories of some really quick guys that do it, but I think by and large most most folks left foot brake in iRacing in this car, which at least for me does make me quicker as well. But it's not quite as much fun. I enjoy the heel and toe part of things. the same rules and things apply as when you're racing online it's almost as if you're having an online race just against bots rather than you know other real humans but everything else is the same about it which is nice in some ways keeps the experience consistent get it through the second lesmo but yeah very well behaved i'm not surprised in, in my experience the ai and i racing is almost always very good a few tracks here and there a few track car combos they can have trouble but tends to be ironed out but on the road side of things especially they seem uh, very very talented and capable certainly more than I am we'll see if I can build up a little speed I haven't practiced too much in this so just using what I learned driving the other sims and it does feel much different which makes you ask that question of which one's right was the car really this skittish might be some setup too, but whoa, just trying to balance that oversteer. It doesn't feel unrealistic to me, but it's it's definitely different than everything else I've driven in this video so far. So it's tough to say which one which one's realistic, but it certainly takes a special touch with this car. As Ligier closes up behind, I gotta pass at least one more car. Ligier now has got some guts. The AI do change a bit over the race. Some that are slow at the beginning will be quicker at the end and vice versa, which is cool to see. They do make mistakes, which some of the other Sims, the AI just make mistakes because they're maybe coded poorly or can't expect certain scenarios, but they're competent enough in iRacing that you know, we just saw the car in front actually ran a bit wide, which is cool to see. So drift through the first Lesmo there. I think second gear for this one. It's a little fast there on entry. And a nice edge in this car. Well, they're very fast. I think I have them set to be 95% for the fastest cars, and I'm barely able to keep up. So a lot of headroom is, oh, the car in front spins. Just avoid them. how I make most of my spots in online races as well. There we go. <laughs> Get around a couple. I think the second car ran wide there too. It was a little bit spooked. Two more positions on skill. So we come down to the Parabolica, second gear. It's so interesting how different this track is, I said already, but it's not even just the corners that have chicanes between them now. It's even the corners around them are much different because you're approaching at such a slower speed than it used to be. Curva Grande is barely a corner, even in this car on this version. Would love to have tried this on the oval as, oh, Alicia there surprises me and gets around. Battle of the century here. 
get it up. The gearbox. Oh, I'm surprised how quick he is. I don't know what the ratings are, individual driver ratings within this set. I, I simply downloaded it off of Trading Paints, but it really is, it's definitely the easiest out of everything I've looked at today to get up and running uh, if you have the subscription and everything. And that's the big gotcha, I guess, with iRacing. If you have it, you might as well try this. Although we're, we're not racing on the vintage circuit, there's plenty of other tracks that maybe suit this car a bit better than modern Monza. Definitely would, would rather many other circuits than something more technical like this. But yeah, you might as well try it if you have iRacing and you wanna, you fancy some offline AI. I got pretty deep into some of the oval stuff uh, last fall, which I know I shared a bit of on here. We got another yellow flag for a second there. Maybe some more freebies. So we'll come through Ascari, a car in front. Guy Ligier slowing down a bit, as you would, I guess, for the yellows. we come to the Parabolica, and we got one more lap. I definitely got to beat him. So we'll come down here. A little bit early on the brakes. Bro broke right about 200, which is where I was on the other circuits as well. But I suppose we're going a lot slower. All right, throttle up, coming out of the corner. Dance it. It does have some of the same qualities, but it's just much more on edge and probably some stuff that you can dial out with setup. We'll come down then to the first corner, heavy on the brakes. Nice and clean. It's good, it's very convincing AI. It's just a shame we have it only on circuits like this. All right, throttle up. Got a nice run on him coming out towards the second chicane. On the inside, get it down the gears. Oh, he all breaks me again. Probably could break much later into the corners. He runs a bit wide there, though. The best scrap is the scrap for last place. Everybody knows that. Oh, we're gonna run too wide there. I was trying to carry too much speed. Just kept it on the circuit, though. That might have done it. Try not to throw it away through the second Lesmo, at least. This guy takes all of the curb and then some exiting there. All right, got just a couple more corners, but he's quite far ahead at this point. Throw it in, chuck it in a little bit. I think I would do much better on a second race now. Though I don't know if I have anything for the cars up front, but guy here, it's just about the same speed I am. So we'll come up to the Parabolica, final corner. Break just past that 200 marker this time. All the way down to second gear. Not gonna have anything for him. I get beat by Guy Ligier. But it's a lot of fun. This is really good. And uh, especially for other cars, if you like modern cars and stuff, I, I recommend the iRacing AI. It's very entertaining and, and easy. That's the best part, it's just, Simply set up a race and go. So I'm not sure what conclusions you can draw from this, unless you like doing three lap sprint races around Monza in 60s Grand Prix cars. I don't know if this tells you exactly everything about each sim or which one is the best, but it is interesting to, to play them side by side and go from sim to sim to sim and see the strengths and weaknesses and, and what makes each of them unique. Like I started this off, there is no best sim in my opinion. I think this displays that as well. All of them got their quirks with them. You know, someday if we do get the holy grail of sim, we'll all know it because I think everybody will be in there. But I think doing this was interesting enough to just confirm some of the things that I, uh, I think often or that I say often about some different sims or maybe make me think twice about it. I thought Automobilista 2's AI did a lot better when you look at them side by side with other sims, uh, especially R Factor 2. R Factor 2 might've been the only one I was frustrated by in the making of this. Just boxed in here, nowhere to go. We got Joe Bonnier on the inside and uh, kill ourselves. But I know there's been a lot of discourse going around about how modern sims and AI in general have been left behind. And then you see some of the stuff like Gran Turismo's doing uh, with, with their sophisticated AI or even iRacing here. I think that showed quite well that it is possible to make good AI opponents. And I think there's a great reason to do that. At least that's the type of racing that I most enjoy. 
So I hope our factor, you know, they keep working on the AI for that sim. I hope Automobilista 2 the same. And I've recently heard for Assetto Corsa, there's some folks trying to iron out or add some new rules and things to that sim to uh, just provide more options and, and hopefully fix some of the quirks that the AI have there. For myself, I think these will all still be in my rotation. For quite a while, they all have unique things about them that I quite enjoy. And depending on where the specific car and track and type of racing is that I'm fancying to do, I think there's a lot of options. And for that, I think we can be thankful. So at this point, there's not much else to say about this. I'm sure I could test many other combinations. And so if there's something specific that you think would be a better thing to look at across a bunch of different sims, let me know. Might be interesting to do at some point. But for now, I think that's enough Monza and classic Grand Prix cars for the time being. So until next time, this is GP Laps, and I'll see you all again later.